Uh, hi everyone. Uh, very excited to be here. Uh, when when Job sent me the agenda for this forum, I was a bit confused. Uh, I was like, this this sounds like a lot of very smart tech people talking about very smart, exciting tech stuff, which I don't really understand uh, because I don't have a tech background. I actually have a management background and very far from technology. In fact, uh, before Britain, I was working for the UN. Uh, in countries like Myanmar, uh, Bangladesh, India, trying to develop insurance or risk management solutions for low-income households. So what I'm going to talk about is how we are using the life rate technology to solve a very basic uh, business problem for Britain. And uh, I hope you'll find that exciting. And uh, uh, this is a slide that uh, my corporate communication insists that I have to talk about, so I will. Uh, Britam, uh, if some of you may not know, Britam is a diversified financial services group based in Kenya. Uh, actually a really old company, more than 50 years. Uh, we are in insurance, asset management and property business. Uh, as you can see our footprint, we are slowly inching towards South Africa. Uh, but still, uh, majority of our uh, businesses around the East African countries like Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Uganda. Uh, we are the largest life insurance company in Kenya among the top general insurance companies and the largest micro insurance company, uh, which is the business that I head. Uh, now, the question would be what is micro insurance? What is this emerging consumers we are talking about? Uh, so I'll, I'll give you some context before I come to uh, my business problem. Uh, this, this morning I was reading Business Daily, which is like this business newspaper for East Africa, and it's talking about how insurance penetration in Kenya is actually on decline. So while in other countries insurance is progressing, is developing, most of East African countries the insurance penetration is really low. Uh, in Kenya it's uh, actually among the lowest in the last 15 years. Uh, insurance penetration stands at 2.4%. Uh, in other countries where we work, like Rwanda and Uganda, I think it's even less than 1, 1 1.5%. And uh, what is the reason for that? Uh, the reason is, is very clear. I mean, most of insurance companies in this market have focused on the high income individual uh, businesses, which is a very small amount because the largest population in these countries is uh, what we call emerging consumers. And uh, these emerging consumers are not low-income households uh, because Britain, we strongly believe that low-income households should be serviced or provided social security by the government because they don't really have any disposable income to pay for uh, managing or protection against buying market-based protection against other risks. But there is a big emerging consumer class. Uh, these are people who have uh, uh, businesses, who, who have like these gig kind of works, like you know Uber or these kind of things. Uh, they have a stable, relatively stable income. They have disposable income to actually buy risk protection products. Uh, in Kenya, this the this population is estimated at 11 million. So this is, uh, I, I, I don't like to categorize, but this is, we are talking about the lower middle class and some middle class population. And that's where my business, the business uh, that I manage at Britain looks at, uh, is categorized as micro-insurance, which is simple, affordable insurance for emerging consumers. Uh, we are the largest provider in Kenya because we had a head start. I think this realization came some time back that you really need to focus on this business uh, in this customer segment. And uh, as of last year, we are doing around, uh, I think this this is a bit older slide, but last year, uh, I think last and this year, we'll be doing around eight to nine million dollars in, in premiums for, for this customer segment, uh, which is actually in fact bigger than some of the insurance companies uh, uh, in, in Kenya. Uh, 40% market share, we insure around uh, 700,000 lives, around 0.7 million lives. Our vision is to reach around 2 million lives by 21-2022. Now, uh, servicing emerging consumers can, can be a bit different business than conventional insurance. And uh, 
I'll talk about two main challenges that we face while trying to serve this market. The first challenge is distribution. These guys cannot afford the conventional insurance. They cannot afford, uh, you know, very, very high priced insurance products. So what they need is affordable products that can that they can access very easily. When I say affordable, it doesn't mean just cheap products. Affordability can also mean how does it align with your cash flow. So by that I mean the product can still cost $12, but if I charge that every month, if I collect that every month, that $1, that may align with my customer's uh, cash flow much better and make it more affordable. So that whole concept presents the first challenge in servicing emerging consumer, which is distribution. So how do I reach these customers? How do I enroll these customers? How do I collect these small premiums? Because if you look at the kind of products we are doing, we have products where we collect a monthly premium of up to uh, uh, even 50 cents, like $1, $3 a month to uh, some higher value products, some digital products. So distribution is, is the first big challenge. And how we have tried to address this is through partnerships. Uh, we can't sell like a one dollar product to someone out on the street through conventional uh, channels. So we have tried to look at new kind of distribution channels, such as the first one which actually started microinsurance at Britain was partnering with tea factories. Uh, that sounds odd, right? Like, well, why would you distribute insurance through tea factories? So Kenya is actually one of the world's largest tea exporters. They have 67 tea factories. I think after India and Sri Lanka, they're the third largest tea exporters. They have around 600,000 small-scale tea farmers. When you include their families, their population is almost 2.5 million. Now, if I put my business hat, that's a huge market, right? But how do I tap that market? So we actually partnered with this tea factories. There is a, a umbrella organization which manages these 67 cooperative uh, tea factories, and we actually distribute insurance through these tea factories at the at the village level. And through that, we are able to reach almost half a million lives uh, through this innovative health insurance products. The premiums are collected through the tea factory itself. Similarly, we have other interesting products. Recently, we launched a product with a telco, with a telecom company, uh, Equitel, which is one of the largest telco companies in Kenya with around uh, two, three million subscribers. Uh, so we are distributing insurance through, through telcos. So it's, it's as easy, buying insurance is as easy, uh, easy as buying airtime. So all you have to do is say yes to an SMS and you get enrolled into this monthly insurance product that you can then keep paying through your uh, mobile money. Uh, if, if you may know, I think Kenya is the most advanced country in the world in case of mobile money, thanks to M-Pesa, uh, which has like almost 80% of Kenyans use mobile pesa on a daily basis. I have actually stopped carrying cash since long time back in Kenya. I use M-Pesa all the time because you can pay everyone from your Uber driver to a grocery store using M-Pesa. So that of course definitely helps in collecting these small premiums. Uh, similarly, we have a product around uh, uh, SMEs. So SMEs are some of the examples I can give is like security guards. For example, we partner with a security guard agency to ensure all the security guards under their different different uh, verticals and this has been quite a good business for us uh, like i said eight nine million dollars annually in terms of premium profitable business we are actually growing faster than the rest of the industry i told you the kenyan issue industry is shrinking but our emerging consumer business our cumulative growth over the last three four years has been around 12 13 percent while since 2012 it has been 40%. So that means we have actually in the last six, seven years, we have like really uh, almost doubled our business. And now that brings to the second challenge for serving emerging consumers. The first challenge was distribution, like I said, uh, selling cheap, small ticket insurance, collecting premiums. But the second challenge is around operations. Okay, now you have sold insurance, but how do you service these customers? 
And if you notice something, all these custom, all these products here are health insurance products, some form of health insurance. And there is a reason for that. For an emerging consumer segment, health is the biggest risk, right? Uh, there is uh, there is some data from World Bank which says that out of all the people who get hospitalized in the world in a year, 25% uh, of them fall below poverty line because of the expenses, hospital expenses. So this is a risk that they see that they face every day. And this is the risk that they are ready to pay for, to, to insure against. We, we have faced so many challenges in selling, um, let's say, life insurance or funeral insurance, which is pretty big in South Africa, in, in the East African context, uh, for two reasons. People don't like to think in that long term. And second, they believe that if I'm going to buy life insurance, I'm going to invite bad luck on me. And But health insurance is something they are willing to pay for, to buy. And that's why most of our products are around meeting that need. However, it presents a big challenge for us. Now, the problem with health insurance is uh, you can do a reimbursement product, which is I went to the hospital, I paid my bills, and after 10 days, my insurance company has paid me back. Uh, that's how a lot of micro-insurance products work. That's now how products that serve us. I'm sure all of us sitting here have a health insurance. We get a card that we go to the hospital. It's mostly cashless. But that's not how traditional micro-insurance products were designed. But we thought that that doesn't serve the customer's need because this customer needs money when they are actually at the hospital. That's when they need the cash. They, they can't wait for a reimbursement because they will be collecting money from their families, borrowing loans, taking from their employer. So we decided to partner with around 400 hospitals across Kenya. Uh, these are not the high-end hospitals, these are the second tier. A lot of them are actually mission-based and government hospitals because we wanted to make health insurance affordable. However, now that created a lot of problems for us. Like I said, distribution was the first challenge, second was operations. Now, a traditional health insurance, you, you have higher premiums, so it makes sense to set up uh, like operations which suit this high margin business, but this, this business is low margin. I'm already collecting like what, one, two dollars, so my margin on per customer is like two, three percent. And that's why I really need operations that are efficient, that can service these clients. Mm -hmm. And the main problems that we faced around our health micro insurance operations were three. First, we had like all these hospitals, 400 hospitals, but how do they identify my clients? I think what your health insurance cards do, a lot, a lot of high income insurance, health insurance everywhere in the world, you get like this fancy biometric card, I think. Uh, uh, at least that's what it is, it is in Kenya. There is a biometric card, which when you first time you go to the hospital, they collect your biometric information. And every next time they actually uh, identify you against that information. But I can't do that because that card, the annual cost is $11, $11. So some of my products are cheaper than that. I can't afford to provide biometric identification to these clients. My second problem was around approvals. Uh, now, the, why do we need approvals in this setup? Because remember what? This is a very delicate business. I'm trying to protect my margins while also trying to make sure that the clients get good service. So approvals would be around, generally we, we, we have a negotiation with the hospital. We say, okay, if, if it's malaria, you are going to charge this much because I know this is how much it costs. But now there are cases, uh, peculiar cases, where a hospital may have to charge more. Let's say they have to do some extra tests, they have to do something uh, different than the standard procedure. And they need approvals for, for such things because that increases my claims cost, reduces mm -hmm. my margin, and if I keep allowing hospitals to do that all the time, I, I won't be making any money. So, so we have this approval process which was being done on emails or even calls, people used to call us, email. I think uh, in a day, 100, 100 uh, such approvals, because remember I'm managing a huge population. The population we are looking at is around 700,000 customers and uh, thousands of claims every day. That was the second challenge. 
The third challenge now was around data entry, or you can say data management. Uh, everyone keeps talking about big data and uh, how it's so useful, but I think it's this, this funny like how insurance companies use data. Is this on every day we are generating so much data from our customers who are visiting to these clients. I can actually like standing here, I can tell you like how much a malaria event will cost anywhere in Kenya. I can tell you about all the hospitals, I can tell you how many days it, someone will get admitted with that level of data. However, getting that data, processing that data was so slow because all this process was paper-based. People, people were filling paper forms, they were sending us this uh, in, in uh, couriers. I, in my office, I actually had a room uh, which, which was just full of all these claim forms and it used to feel like that we are sitting in a uh, in a government office, in a 90s government office, if you have been there, with full of files uh, and all that. And so these are the challenges in our operations is what we wanted to address. And uh, at that time, Britain was going through a digital transformation project. Uh, I think some of you must have seen like a case study with life Ray around some of the things we are doing. And then we uh, spoke to our life Ray partner in Foraxon and said, this is our problem. It's a very peculiar case. It's not the high income, high margin business. How do we solve these issues using life Ray's technology? And uh, solution is very basic, very simple. I think that's, that's the whole uh, I would say the gist of my business is simplicity. I, I'll, I'll be much happier how simple I can keep it. So the solution we arrived at was like a partner portal, which is kind of works with our uh, line of business health, micro insurance systems. And uh, what we want to build is an ecosystem around that. So as to say, remember I was talking about these tea factories and SMEs before, and all these hospitals. So what our aim is uh, providing the life ray portal at the front end, we create an ecosystem right from the enrollment to the claims so that it's, our partners can enroll themselves, they can enroll our customers, they can access all the servers, they can, and then they can finally uh, even get service through our partner hospitals at the same platform. So it's like an end-to-end -end, uh, platform. That's the journey we have started. Uh, I think we have made uh, quite a bit of progress uh, in terms of where we are currently. So we so we are now live with a lot of hospitals. I think uh, this year around 10 to 15 percent of my claims will be completely digital claims, uh, uh, fully digital. We are live at around 60 hospitals in Nairobi, and. Uh, uh, when we talk about technology, we are, we are talking about a very different context. Some of these hospitals have never actually seen a portal like that. And so for them, it's this. So they're very excited about the simplicity and we, we are getting such excellent results like that I'll just share with you. Uh, in terms of portal, this is just a screenshot of how it looks like. Uh, very simple, I mean, you can do different things. You can, like I was talking about three problems, right? Identification, approvals, and uh, uh, what was the third problem? And data. Uh, identification, so the system as it's integrated to our core system, uh, we used a photo ID based system. People can actually, we, we give a policy number to our customers. When they go to the hospital, that number is uh, entered into this portal. The photos are matched against the individual. That tries to, and this card, uh, this photo card that we issue, it costs uh, 30, 30 cents. So that's, I'm comparing it to an $11 biometric card to a 30 cents. Of course, does it solve all of my bio identification problems? Maybe not. Obviously, it's not as strong as, as a biometric authentication, but look at the cost efficiency compared to an $11 to a 30 cents card. Uh, second problem was approvals, uh, all these approvals. So in this portal, we have like uh, something like this notification bell, as you can see, so our hospitals can just send us any approvals which are for non-standard procedures through this portal. Our uh, claims people just approve them on these portals. They are sent back immediately, and our, our customers, our clients uh, don't have to wait, which was the case earlier, which was based on emails or calls. Uh, my final problem was data. 
And of course, having this portal has really helped us in managing all this data that comes through. Uh, I'll be very honest, I don't think we are still making full use of all of this data, which we'll be able to do by creating this uh, when this ecosystem is fully complete. Uh, but clearly, it has solved a lot of these problems. Uh, how it works, very simply, I think that's uh, some of our partners using this portal at their hospital. Uh, partner portal is kind of a, the life uh, partner portal is an interface between our systems and our hospital. It's connected to our uh, uh, core line of business health financial system, which has uh, which is accessed by our claims team, our finance team. Uh, on the front end, our partner hospitals they access this portal directly. So now all the data entries, so all the clients have to do, remember simplicity. How the workflow works is very simple. The client walks in, they have a card, the, the partner hospital just enters those details and everything else is pre-populated. We are even trying to make it easier for our customers in terms of uh, the process. And then all that data is sent to us and what has it led to? Uh, improve customer experience because our customers are, uh, I'll, I'll come back to that point, I think that's a very interesting point, let me come back to that. Enhanced real-time reporting, uh, like I said, now all this data, we are, we, are, we are looking at our claims on a daily basis. I can actually predict my claims cash outflow in, in advance because I can see all these claims coming up. So I know that I'm going to pay them at the end of this month. So I can see, like that's, that's just to give an example of what kind of data we are using uh, this portal for. However, what my team is most excited about is around the claim processing time. So we try to look at how this portal has changed our uh, health insurance uh, claims time. Uh, the bar below shows how what we were doing earlier. Uh, there were four steps in our claim process. First is the submission, which is like getting claims from our hospitals. Second is capture, which is now some people are collecting all this information in, in the system. How it was being done was the manual data entry. And then someone was scanning all these documents. If, if someone here has worked in health insurance, it's a very complicated business with a lot of fraud and all those things. So you even need to look at the documents. People actually have to go through what kind of procedures were given to this patient, whether they were valid or not. Because as you know, overutilization is a big problem in health insurance. So we, so we used to scan all these documents, then approval, then uh, we have a team of medical people who look at the validity of treatment and everything to then finally approve the claims, which goes to finance. Now, that process had a lot of inefficiencies, clearly, as you can see. Hospital submission, almost 30 days, which is a hospital is not going to send us claim every day, right? They are going to send us in, in a batch at the end of the month, which kind of uh, stretches my cash flow. Okay, I, I know that, okay, I have based on the historical trends, but there was a 30 days just for that. Claims capture uh, is taking so much time, mainly because of the dead time in process. It's not that someone is doing data entry for 20 days, but because the backlog is so much that a claim which has come is now sitting for 20 days to be captured, to be scanned, all those things. So around 20 days, then approval, finance. All this was taking almost two months to process a claim from the time when the customer was serviced at the hospital. And this was a major problem for our partner hospitals. Remember I talked about small hospitals who, who need to be who, who are themselves running at like very short cash flow. So they need to be paid very quickly, very, so they were not very happy. So that was affecting our customer service at our customers, at our uh, partner hospitals. And this is some of the changes we were able to bring from this portal that we introduced sometime last year. Uh, hospital submission, I think that's almost a day because it's live. Uh, capture, it's, there is still some time lag because of someone processing these, this data. Uh, just making sure the validity of the data before it's entering in, entered into the line of business systems. Approval finance. So I mean, we were able to bring down our claim processing time to less than 10 days, around 7 days from 60 days. And that had 
a very interesting impact for our partner hospitals. Now our partner hospitals are actually even ready to offer us something called a prompt claim payment discount. Which is to say like, okay, you are paying our claim so fast, it helps like running my business. As you know, hospital is a very, uh, a, a very cash flow dependent business. They have to pay salaries, buy medicines, do procedures and uh, while they, so they, a lot of health insurers work on credit system. So actually two of our partners that we started with have given us discounts of uh, almost 5 to 7 percent uh, around their claims. So this is what we have been able to achieve. Uh, we are currently live with some of our enrollment partners, but we are hoping that by next year this ecosystem will be fully complete so that this entire customer journey is, is, is digital. Uh, and that's what brings me to the next steps for our for us are in our engagement with life phase what we want to do but based on what we have achieved is as i said next year we want to do 60 percent of our claims completely digital and uh, which is quite exciting because the uh, conventional health insurers in kenya are actually behind us because we had a need we had to simplify and get cost efficiency in our operations we are actually ahead of our conventional health insurance businesses. And now these guys are looking at us and want to actually replicate this solution. Uh, we want to, of course, when this ecosystem is complete, like these alerts and notifications for our customers around everything, how much they are being charged, because the, and even use data to actually validate that the procedures that they have been prescribed, are they the right procedures for that condition? Uh, finally, like I said, the digital enrollment bit, which is to complete this ecosystem and hopefully uh, by, by, by next year we'll be able to have a completely digital ecosystem for our emerging consumers. So, I mean at that point I'll stop and to conclude it's, it's really to say that uh, what the biggest advantage for us has been simplicity. This portal has been uh, so simple to use that the adoption from our hospitals has been very quick. Uh, like I showed you the screenshots, it's, it's, it's a very intuitive, it's not like if you have looked at the uh, traditional insurance management systems, they can be very scary. Uh, they look very scary to me, to be honest. But this system is like, okay, the screen, the customer experience, the customer journey is super, super simple. And that has really helped us in pushing the adoption. And yeah, and hoping to do some more stuff with uh, life rate. Okay. Thank you so much.